Welcome to this AOS CX10.13 update, IP fix with the Pensando PSM and the CX10000 as of AOS CX release 10.13.005 and included in this presentation is the topic of Traffic Insights. Now Traffic Insights is an HPE Aruba telemetry system. It is available on other selected CX platforms but on the CX10K, it is dependent on the IPFIX protocol and it's not going to be formally available until 10.13.1000. But I've included it in here because it's intertwined up to a point with IPFIX and it made a lot of sense to include it. So I'm Steve Bartlett, technical marketing engineer supporting CX switching. And this is the agenda, starting with the overview, use cases, details, configuration, configuration guidance, and ending on diagnostics. And here is a list of some of the acronyms used in the PowerPoint and the presentation. I've only included the acronyms that are probably less familiar than some of the common ones like TCP, UDP, which I've left out. So hopefully I've caught, caught them all. So first up, go straight into the overview. So a quick look at the solution enhancements as part of the 10.13 release for the CX10,000. So obviously IPFIX is the big, big feature release as part of it. So formal support now for IPFIX with the PSM release 1.72.1T and AOS CX10.13. These are the recommended software release levels to use when using IPFIX. Just a note that AFC support for AOS 6 10.13 is scheduled for a future, a future AFC release. It is relatively around the corner, but it's not there yet today. So metering and export of IP fix fly information to an external collector is one of the enhancements as a functional capability. And IP fix support requires all traffic to be redirected through to the DSMs. These are the AMD Pensando ASICs, also known as DPUs, for firewall inspection. That's where the IP fix metering, metering process takes place. So Traffic Insight, a telemetry system which uses IP fixed data is now available. It's a POC level or beta at the moment until 10.13.1000 release and is available for use as an internal IP fix collector. And firewall logs versus IP fix records, they serve different purposes so they can co coexist and they do complement each other. So first of all, firewall logs typically provide detailed information about traffic blocked or allowed as they as the flows traverse through the firewall so that's based on source destination ip addressing ports and protocols and they're specific to the firewall actions ip fix records however they focus on collecting and exporting flow information about that flow so they do provide a more holistic view of network patterns and resource usage to get a broader understanding and a, and a richer insight of network behavior. So they both complement each other. So some RFCs, and, and although they're not top of the list of recommended reading most of the time, if you are going to pick one to start with, do take a look at RFC 7011. It does give you a good insight into IP fix as a standard protocol and how it is deployed. So do start there. And of course, there's lots of relevancy in these other RFCs as well, should you need to take a look. So a quick overview of IP fix. There's a little bit of text involved in the next few slides, but there are some schematics coming up. To, to review in more detail um, on the detail section of IP fix. So first of all, it is uh, a standards based protocol and it's designed to bundle up information and export it to an IP fix collector uh, from an IP fix enabled device. And it has there effectively there to provide details of IP flows. 
and it does offer this extensibility um, which gives it a, a degree of flexibility for vendors to provide their own detailed information relative to their own product about specific flows and this this case it does come into play with the Pensando implementation. So this standardized protocol used for collecting exporting network flow data from network devices, routers and switches for instance, including that traffic about those IP flows that passes through the devices because they are metered or monitored such as the source and destination IP and the 5.2 pool flow along with the uh, volume of flow as a minimum typically of transmitter and receive data uh, bytes and the duration of the communication. So it, it's ingested into other monitoring devices to actually make sense of that traffic. So and this helps organizations to effectively identify potential issues and security threats. So that's the, the key benefit of it. So IP fix, the background to it, it is derived from NetFlow 9, which morphed into NetFlow 10, and NetFlow 10 is regarded as very similar to IP fix. And some in some blogs, etc., a lot of people will say that IP fix is NetFlow 10, but NetFlow is specific to Cisco devices and it is proprietary. And it's not actually the same as IP fix. So the IP fix is the open standard and effectively is vendor agnostic. So now we're going to go into some terminology of the structure of IP fix. We will look at this in relative to the CX10,000 as we move forward, but just want to introduce the terms now. So first of all, we've got data records known as flow records, IP fix reports. So this contains the information about individual network flows and the, the various traffic flow details. So each record corresponds to a single flow that's going to be from one source IP to another IP, including tie stamps, byte and packet counts and other flow specific data. And these are sent to a collector. So we will look at this in more detail, but this is just a quick overview. And then we have the concept of template records. So templates, very important because they define the structure and format of the data records that are sent. So when data records are sent in the form of flow records to a collector, for instance, it's the templates that are always, that are also sent to the collector to help the collector define the various records and what they are identifying within the flow records. So the template records effectively help the, the collectors understand the data sets that are sent to them and define the specific fields that are being used. So with that in mind, they both are sent to a collector. So you, you've sent a, uh, the the data records and sets or the IP fix reports to a collector. Also, IP fix templates are sent to the collector and there's a template for specific protocols. There's going to be one for UDP, TCP, ICMP, etc., which we'll look at in more detail as we go through the, the slides. So both are sent at uh, periodic intervals. So overall, this is a great help, whereas, you know, before IP fix, customers would have to put proprietary metering or monitoring systems around their network. Now they can just enable it as an integral part of their IT networking infrastructure and collect it to a, with a, in, within a common standard, recognizing they don't need to know what's in the packet themselves, but they have the IP fix 5.2 pool uh, transmission flows, uh, the duration of the flow gives them great insights of what is happening on the network to help troubleshoot uh, anomalies on the network, security issues and general pinch points.
So this is when I go through this slide. So look at this is a, a generic overview of a device, a networking device of no particular vendor description. It's really just to bring in some concepts to you know to bring them in so that we can then relate to them to the CX10K in a few more slides down. So we've got our networking device. So this is just in a virtual networking device, say, and we've got some IP traffic going through it. And within that device, we've got observation points that are effectively observing that traffic and creating IP fi fix, uh, monitoring the packet flow and taking those characteristics of the packets into an IP fix packet. Now these monitoring points can be on a line card, for instance, it could be on a port. So we could have a, an observation point, a metering point for IP fix, one per line card if it's a chassis, or it could be on a specific port or just one per specific a ASIC. But you get the point that this will vary depending on the product themselves, the networking product themselves and a vendor implementation. And they all feed up into an observation domain. The observation domain is going to be having a number of observation points. It could be just a single one, as you'll see with the CX10000 and the DSM, or it could have multiple observation points, metering um, monitors going into that domain. Each domain has a unique identity and there could be multiple observation domains within a particular device. And the concept of a flow with IP fix is a unidirectional series of packets between one source, des source IP to another destination IP observed during a, a specific time containing source IP, destination pi, etc. The, the five tuple characteristics, transport protocol, source port, destination port, and as a minimum with the amount of traffic that's being sent and that vendor specific information that can be inserted pretended, uh, by the vendor should they need to, as we have. So that's the definition of flow. It's one from A to B, if you like, from one source IP to a destination IP and shouldn't be confu uh, confused with a firewall session, which is a bi-directional flow. And we'll come back to that. So this metering process uh, generates the IP fix flow records uh, from the, the observation domain, aggregating those flow records to uh, an exporter of some description that's in, in the networking device. And with that, that's running on the networking device that exports the flow records in the form of reports. And we've got our IP fix sets and flow records going out to our collector, which will receive the monitoring information, ingest that information, and with the template structure, then present it for effectively human consumption in the form of graphs and tabular reports, etc. So it does, IP fix does allow the concept of flow records with match fields. And if you're familiar with the 63, 6400, uh, there are options to do that, but with the CX10K, we don't have those knobs. So these collect fields are specific to capturing specific information and for IPv4 and IPv6. So on the 10K right now, we don't have that capability. There are no knobs. The big thing to call out on the 10K, as I will repeat further down, is that all valid packets that are monitored by an IP fix uh, monitoring or metering point are effectively captured uh, via, via that particular flow. So there's no option of creating match fields and collect fields on the CX10,000. It's kind of all or nothing in the CX10,000 case. It's actually flows within the flow table. So if they're in the flow table, they're, they are capable of being captured by the IP fix process. If they're not in the firewall flow table, then they are not available to be captured. So 
a very high level view of the components and this is a very simplified diet diagram i know but we're going to go drill, drill down into the detail shortly so we've got uh six ten thousand with some ip flows traversing the ten thousand either north and south or east and west uh we've got the psm key components obviously com for configuration purposes which will be configuring the flow exporter on the six ten thousand and we've got IP fix reports and IP fix templates generated by, by the IP fix process that then is sent to a collector. And you can have obviously multiple collectors on the CX10,000. We'll get into that detail later. And when it relates to traffic insight, the IP fix process is received by the traffic insight process and ingested onto the database and it can be accessed via REST or CLI and as I mentioned earlier this process is primarily for the use case of having it having the telemetry sensor central that's not here yet but the traffic insight process is that's coming down in 10.13 1000 and but it is being developed and it will carry on being developed between now and when that integration with central is complete so you will get further updates on that so it's just a bit of a heads up now about traffic insight what it's doing how it works and um, the various CLI commands and the process to enable it is part of what we're presenting today so IP fix with the persona PSM and the 610,000. So uh, high level then, um, the persona DSM supports IP fix metering of IP flows through the DSM modules um, and the flow export feature, but IPv4 only for IPv4 packets. And if you recall, if you're familiar with the Pensando PSM 610,000 architecture at the moment, we're only supporting services with IPv4. So that's that also applies to IP fix. So globally, we enable IP fix in the CX10,000 under the DSM context. So you just turn it on and effectively it's enabled in the DSM, the Passando DPU DSM. And the flow exporter configuration is configured by the user on the CX10,000 using the PSM. So we don't use the CLI to configure our flow exporters. And we'll cover all this in the configuration section. Just to reinforce, there's no flow records, match fields or collect fields to be configured. It's either on and collecting IP fix records for traffic that's traversing the DSM or it's not on and it's off. So all valid packets uh, monitors part of the IP fix metering process will generate the flow records for export. And only IPv4, just to reinforce that, for the traffic that's actually traversing the Pensando DSMs. And traffic insight, that's regarded, it's going to, although there's some CLI configuration to manually get that up and running, it's regarded as an internal collector within AOCX and some of the data can be accessed by the CLI and API and the PSM configuration effectively treats it like another collector on the switch that needs to, for traffic to go output and we'll see this further in on the slides exactly how that flow works. So a quick look at use cases before we go into the details. So most of this I'm hoping will be relatively straightforward to get, get you know, everybody else, else around. So we've got the 610K, the various points where the sweet spot for the 610K at the top of rack with IP flows going from east to west or north south to uh, another top of rack across the fabric and then of course we've got the border border leaf with traffic traversing into or outside that particular fabric of traffic coming in 
And the key top, top, uh, top feature sets that are of interest to customers is threat detection, providing network visibility and working on the basis. You can't protect against something if you can't see it. So IP fix is a big enabler for that, for detecting abnormal traffic flows and highlighting issues early. Performance monitoring, obviously another big, big concern for customers about uh, scaling their environments with capacity planning. And also some customers, customers might be using it for network accounting in billing for specific departments and areas of their network. And the type of output you can get once you've actually pushed it out to a collector is a lot of this information be then becomes easily digested by network administrators. So you've got the top 10 conversations on the left here with the number of uh, egress and egress bytes and the percent of the traffic is always a good topic for customers. And this is relative to specific parts of the network can be applied to a specific part of the network. And again, the endpoints, the top 10 endpoints that are being used along with the top 10 protocols. So this is just from a highlight for network visibility and performance monitoring, but there's also so much more you can do with it with a good collector and the capabilities of it. So moving into details, so now we're going into, we'll go into the details of how it's supplied on the 610K, but I just wanted to go through some of the IP fixed terminology and from an RFC perspective. Now this may or may not come in hand or handy with relating to um, RFPs, for instance, or even just talking generally to customers. But because it's in the RSC and certain vendors will interpret their, the way they label and the nomenclature for certain elements of IP fix may change. But if I just stick to the RSC references, then you can relate to that even when relating to other vendors. So first of all, we have an observation point and that is a location in the network just from a very high level where um, packets are observed uh, on the CX10K. The observation point is on operational flows, which is post firewall policy inspection on each DSM if the firewall policy is applied. So if no policy is applied, then everything resident in the flow table is still monitored. Um, so basically what it means is that the way it works within the CX10K, and we'll look at this in a, in a flow diagram shortly, is that if it's all about the flow table. So if a flow is in the flow table uh, for firewall inspection, whether you apply a policy or not, then if you turn on IP fix, then you can capture that flow table, uh, sorry, that flow, flow characteristics if it's in the flow table. If you apply a policy and you're blocking something to go into the flow table because you've denied it, um, you're obviously not going to catch the flow flow characteristics in it. So everything's got to be in the flow table and resident for it, so for it to work. Then there's the observation domain. Uh, so this is a set of observation points that feed up into the observation domain. And within the Pensando uh, architecture, there's two observation domains, one for each DSM with a single observation point. So that's how it's being leveraged. And we'll see that it shortly. And the flow record containing information about the specific flow observed from a different, a, a specific observation point. So there's some de details there. So it is a unidirectional flow between source A to source B with the various characteristics that are captured as part of the IP fix process. And the metering process effectively turns that detail into flow records. Right, so here we've got a collector. That's a, I'm just gonna skip over the exporting process and collection process and go to the ones that are more relevancy on the CX10,000 and what we're going to be talking about today. So a collector 
is one or more collection process internal on the six ten thousand. Um, so we've got an internal collector, uh, track it in traffic insight, or we can leverage an external collector as a collector. But they're treated both the same from a PSM configuration perspective. Then we've got the exporter that's obviously on the CX10,000 and an IP fix, IP fix device is at least supporting one exporting process. So the, this is now on to the, the key parts that I wanted to talk about on the RSC term, the terminology is the templates. So they define the structure and format of the flow records and provides that standardized way to describe the information that are in it and templates as i mentioned can provide those flexible extensions so that's very important and we'll see that as well and we've got the concept of sets so templates feed into sets and we've got three different type of sets the first is the template set and we have a template set for ipv4 tcp ipv4 udp and also ipv6 as well as an example and their sense of the collectors i mentioned earlier periodically and although we are not supporting v, uh, v6 as a firewall service the templates are sent out with the ipv4 templates and in the collector to the collector option templates that's not mandatory we're not supporting this we're waiting for some feedback from customers on how to move that forward so that's going to be driven by Pensando in future releases if it's deemed that that's required but obviously we are looking at data sets and supporting those because the template sets and data sets effectively are the ones that make the system work and they contain flow records which is the details of the individual flows so with data sets and template sets that's what we have template sets just to remind ourselves they're they're providing the collectors the right appropriate information to reference the content in the data sets to actually make sense of those information that it, it receives so this is a quick overview of the template and data set summary. So on a CX10,000, we've got an observation point DSM1. Then that feeds up into an observation domain. And we've got observation point DSM2 on the same CX10,000. That's got its own separate observation domain. And we've got the concept of an exporter and the frequency range. And this will be repeated as we go through is from 10 seconds to 15 minutes no match fields or collect fields or knobs to configure so it's the ip fix is turned on or it's not and if it's turned on it's actually collecting ip fix records for all flows that it sees in the flow table and those ip fix packets are sent out to an ip fix flow collector there can be more than one flow collector up to a maximum of 16 configured we'll talk about that a little bit more as well and the default destination port for ip fix is 4739 this is configurable on the system so you can use a different destination port uh, same with tcp or udp but it doesn't make any sense to use uh, the tcp stack because it's a, a udp it's effectively one way and within the ip fix header we have version length sequence number and observation domain id that i mentioned here that we've got two of those in the cx10000 for dsm1 and dsm2 then we've got the ip fix set data set id would be referencing the template and then there's obviously the length and then within the effectively the set fields we've got details about a template set or a data set so quick summary we've got templates they're peri periodically sent to the ip fix collectors each template type is set, sent in a separate packet meaning if it's a tcp template it's sent in a separate packet along with a udp which is sent in a separate packet and so on and so forth 
And likewise, data sets are sent to the IP fix collectors separately from the templates. Yeah, they're sent in separate packets uh, and the maximum flow records per packet is six flow being obviously a flow from one source IP to another destination IP unidirectional. So that's a flow. So we have six flows maximum in a data set sent in an IP fix packet. And that's as I was saying about unidirectional flow. And onto the templates. So this is the IP fix templates that we have. And you can see the template ID on the left here, all the way up to 265. This is on the 610,000. And we've got one for TCP, UDP, ICMP, etc. We've also got the, the IP six, IPv6 equivalents for TCP, UDP, and ICMP. We've got a separate template for non IP flow records at layer two and also one for IPv4 other for 264 and obviously one for IPv6. Again, the IPv6 templates are sent, but they're not actively used because we're not supporting IPv6 in the firewall service yet. Just one thing to note is that the vendor ranges for templates are between the allocation is between 256 and 65535. So this will vary between vendors and how they allocate these template IDs. So for instance, we've got the Pensando implementation here, which is different from the template IDs on the 6300, 6400, and the 8360 series. And likewise, it's going to be different or more than likely be different uh, between other vendors. It's going to be a big coincidence if they end up using the same template IDs. So just be, a, be aware of that. It's no big deal because each system is going to be targeting its collector with its own set of templates and its own data sets. So they'll be referenced together. So now we're getting into the 610,000. So these are the reference points with the template for a flow export policy. So at the bottom here, we've got our T3 switching fabric. And as part of the 610,000 capability with the Pensando ASICs, we redirect our VLANs, the ones we want to fire, inspect with our firewall into the relevant DSMs up these four uh, lag uh, four um, interfaces that is a separate lag for them and within that we've got our flow tables and our ip fix process when it's enabled and that gives us our metering point for each dsm so that's the first part of it so that becomes our observation point obviously very important to know where the packets are being observed. So this is where they're being observed in the Pensando DSM. And that's monitoring our IP flows and creating our flow records. And that's part of that observation domain, but it only has one metering point on that DSM for this particular domain. And those flow records that are generated as part of that observation point are sent out to an exporter and then we've got the same on dsm2 as the metering point generating flow records a separate observation domain for those flow records going to our exporter and we then send that traffic out to a collector or there may be a multiple set of collector so we've got data sets and ip fix templates with data sets being our IP fix reports. So on this observation domain, DSM1, we'll be sending out the whole range of templates. So there's nine of them, 257 to 265 to our collector. So this is the PCAP output. So each one of these is a packet being sent out for that particular data, uh, that template data 
And if we expand on one of these, then you can see we've got, first of all, a timestamp. Now, that timestamp is the flow table export. So from the process of when that exported, that then does a timestamp of the flow table that, that it's pulled all that information out. That timestamp itself is relative to the flow export policy. So that's the frequency. Then we've got our observation domain ID here, which is in this case DSM1. Template ID 257, which is TCP is an example. And exactly the same number of templates will be sent out for observation domain two going down for supporting DSM two. There will be nine templates sent out and those templates will be sent out. The frequency will be dictated by the flow export policy. And that's obviously configurable and it's from 10 seconds to 15 minutes. Hang on. Okay, so that's the templates. I think that's all I had on that. Yeah, that's right. So now going on to the 10K reference points for data sets. So let's take a look at this. So we've got that same architecture high level overview we've got a t3 our dsm one and one slash one and one slash two we've got an ip fix process running and our flow tables their ip fix ready to take the appropriate information from the flow tables when we enable ip fix it's obviously that process is active and it's obviously going to be looking to grab information from the flow tables and the various ip fix variables that information that it needs to get. So we've got two observation domains, flow records to the exporter, IP fix exports. So we've got data sets and reports for the data sets, just a, another terminology for this IP fix reports for data sets going to one or many collectors. And with the data sets, we have a maximum number of six data sets per packet. And you can see them here as an example of the PCAP that I've captured. So 259 is ICMP, uh, 264 is IPv4 other, meaning it's not TCP, UDP or ICMP. And 258 is UDP. So they're the variables that we've got on those. Um, on those pack, packet captures and they're referencing obviously the template that it's going to that needs to be referenced when when that template is sent to the flow collector so we've got a maximum of six flows per ip fix packet and within one of these data sets here you can see the number of each set being a flow so one one flow per data set. So that's how we get the six sets. And within that, we've obviously got the timestamp again, which is the grab from the flow table with the from the IP fix process with the various variables captured as well, the observation domain. And within that flow one expansion, this one is ICMP, you can see here, and that's on the flow set ID, and that's the template it's using. 259. So each flow would always reference a template ID. And again, the data set transmission range is from 10 seconds to 15 minutes. Again, that's a, a function of the flow export policy. So they are sent out at the same frequency as the templates. And that's all set in the and defined in the PSM as part of the flow export policy. So just moving on to the data sets and some of the fields. So this is a data set, as you can see, and it's using 257, it's obviously TCP, you can see that in the fields here. So 
again, we've got the protocol it's using and the destination UDP port. Uh, timestamp, that's the flow export table. Grab timestamp, the, the main ID, again, the template ID that it's using, which is 257, which is two TCP. And then in here is the relevant flow start and end timestamps that are not to be confused with the timestamp that's been grabbed from the flow table itself. So we've got a start flow timestamp, and that is an IE standard field. And then we've got an end flow timestamp, which is an IE standard field. And then we've got a Pensando specific field, IE uh, from AMD, which is the flow last seen. So that's one of the unique flow IE fields that are part of the Pensando system. So it's just to highlight that these three fields are not the same as the timestamp field here, which is just the grab from the flow table and the IP fixed variables and packaged up into a data set or a template. So now I'm just going to go on to some more reference points for flows and IP fixed tables and policy rate and collectors, for instance. And this obviously relates to how things are grabbed from the IP fix, uh, by IP fix from the flow table and how it relates to effectively overall transmission. So first of all, the couple of points there's, yeah, max MTU size on IP fix reports. Now that is set obviously by the exporter, if you like, in terms of the whole overall process, so that's packaged up. But this is not a restriction. It's only there to uniform the export MTU size so that all collectors actually do support that MTU size as they will. Um, not all will support, say, jumbo frames. So that's why that is limited to 1500 bytes. And again, just to reinforce that we've got max flow records per packet T6. Um, and the IP fixed source interface uh, do use that. It's applied in the CLI, or you can use it via REST. So um, user source IP, do define it. If you don't, you pick up a, one of the DSM local IP addresses and it will work at layer two, but obviously it won't work across layer three, a layer three boundary. So do use that IP fixed source interface. It's defined as a defining the IP address, which can be a, an interface loop back, a routed IP interface or an SVI. It doesn't matter, but just do use it as long as it's routable. So from the IP fix for process and itself, the flow table scans information grabbed from the flow table and the various variables relating to IP fix when it's turned on. And that's relative to each flow export policy timer. So that timer is the critical in terms of the way IP fix reports are generated. And that dictates the scan frequency. So it's important to note this. So the flow export policy rate, the upper and lower limit is the minimum is down to 10 seconds and the flow export max rate is 15 minutes, meaning if it's at 10 seconds, then you'll get a flow table scan for the IP fix process every 10 seconds and that will generate the IP fix reports every 10 seconds and they will be transmitted out along with the templates to the appropriate collectors. So the export data set rate in terms of how much the number of flows are going to be sent out, is there's two variables. So there's the number of flows in the DSM, the DSMs, and the export policy rate. So the lower the rate and the higher number of flows dictates the higher transmission rate of IP fixed traffic. So at the higher limit, 
Oops, let's get that back. Press the wrong, wrong arrow. At the higher limit, it's going to be a flow export policy at the lowest rate of 10 seconds every 10 seconds. There will be a maximum of 8 million flows per DSM. That's a unidirectional flow from one source IP to another IP. So that gives us 16 million flows per DSS. That translates to 1.6 million flows per second average across a 10 second period. Now, if that is becoming too high, you can translate that into bytes because we've got the 1500 byte maximum and the, 600, the six records per packet. If that is too high an export rate for the environment, then you increase the export policy rate from say 10 seconds to maybe 30 seconds and that will decrease the transmission rate. Now do remember that ceiling is an extreme case of all the flows being in the maxed out flows in a DSM. And how we arrive at that figure is the P4 DSM, and this is a very big distinction to make, supports 4 million sessions. So a session is effectively a bi-directional firewall flow. So it's initiator and a responder, but that equates to two IP fix flows because an IP fix flow is from one source to a destination IP. So a firewall session will be effectively a session with two flows. So that's how we get this 8 million max IP fix flows per DSM. Even if you look at the release notes, there'd be four million sessions in the release notes per DSM. So on the PSM side for the configuration, we've got one flow export policy, one collector IP per flow export policy. That's all you configured. You can only configure one IP per flow export policy. And effectively it's UDP TCP transport agnostic and with the port, but always use UDP. And obviously you can change a port to, relative to the collector or the end receiver that's actually taking that IP fixed traffic. So the maximum numbers of collectors per PSM fabric is 16. That's fabric wired. So you can also have 16 collectors per DSS. If you do that, then that you have consumed your fabric wide number of collectors and you can't apply any collectors on another DSS. So there is a limitation there to be aware of. You have two collectors per VRF and that includes a default VRF in that uh, scenario. And collectors can be applied and we look at this in the configuration guidance. Collectors can be applied at the DSS level to all VRFs, or with the two, with the click um, to to all VRFs, or they can be applied at the VRF level to to max. And you can mix that policy around, so you could have one collector pushed down to the DSS, which leaves you the scope. And that would be applied to all VRS, which leaves you the scope to apply another collector on individual VRS, depending on depending on the need. Right. So this slide, really, all I wanted to show on this slide is the characteristics of the 10K relative to uh, IPFix on other platforms in terms of what's configured and where. So here we haven't got any flow record configuration with match fields on the 10K, that's, that's not there. We've got the flow export configuration to an external collector. Yes, we can, we do that on the PSM. Flow export with traffic insight. Yes, again, that's on the PSM with actually with some configuration. Um, sorry, that's flow export with traffic insight. Yes, that's on the PSM as well. Flow monitor configuration, traffic insight. Well, there's just one monitor that's applied with traffic insight and that's on the CLI. 
no from flow monitor to external collectors if in terms of match fields or anything like that. So we're now on to configuring IP fix. So let's go straight into that. So it is very, very simple, um, not particularly complex at all. There's only a few things to do. So the prerequisites, which are not really covered in this slide deck at all, but it's all part and parcel of the normal operation for the 610K. The appropriate VLANs are redirected to the DSM modules for file inspection. So that will require for the network VLANs to be created in the PSM and allocated to the appropriate VRS that they are going to use. So that's a prerequisite and that's independent of obviously turning on IP fix. IP fix. So on the CX10 side, the switch side configuration, you just enable flow export globally. That's under the DSM. We'll see that command in a moment and specify the source IP for exported IP fix packets. That's the two things you need to do on the CLI side. And then there's the PS, PS, PSM side configuration where you configure the export policies on the PSM user interface. And then once you've done that, you apply that configured policy to a DSS or a VRF individually, depending on how you want to set that up. So let's take a look at the switch side configuration first. So the first is enable flow export globally, which is under the DSM context IP fix. There's no enable command to do. That's it. That's all you need to do. Set the IP source address of the IP fix packet. Um, so this can be anything you care to mention in terms of um, interface, can be a loopback, can be an SVI, it can be a routed interface, doesn't matter. One thing to note, quite a big one actually, default VRF is only supported today. There is a request coming down the line to support other VRS, but right now we only support the source IP address for export to a collector in the default VRF. And the other part of it, the management VRF, cannot be used it just is not not supported so you've got to use a default vrf so on the psm side just from tenants flow export menu in the psm so that's from tenants flow export you get the flow export uh, user interface up you just add flow export and it's very straightforward um, to get the get this up so flow export give it a name the frequency interval here um, ip fix if you want to use ip fix frame format the collector name the frequency and the ip address target and then the transport of your preference with the port that is it then you create that on the right hand side here and then that's your IP fix po uh, export policy created. That's it, it's done. And UDP port being the default IP fix port being used, but you can change that. Doesn't have to be 4739. And then the option to apply it to a DSS or a number of DSS from a DSS level. So from the DSS, you get the distributed services switch overview up and you'll have a list of DSSs in the fabric that you can check whether you want to apply uh, any item at the top here. So I've just selected one, but if you had 10, you could just check box them all and then stick, uh, check the flow export policy here, that little icon there, and then you get the pop up to say which collectors do you want to apply to that DSS? Obviously a maximum of um, two, because they will be pushed down to all VRS. And in this particular, I've only had two configured anyway, so I'll check both of those. And then you just apply that and you're done. And that will get pushed down to all the VRFs in, that, in this example 
in that DSS. And then the output is flow export policies to collectors on this particular DSS that I selected. And that's just calling out that all VRS will inherit that flow export policy, excuse me. So if we were looking to apply to VRS only, it's very, very simple. We select tenants, VRF, and then you've got the option and the flow export policy within that VRF to select and checkbox the appropriate export policies that have been entered into the system and then select save and we're done and on the back of that you get the same output but under the vrf context that those collectors have been applied to that vrf and that vrf only so very very straightforward so the summary prerequisites um, are desired vrs and the appropriate VLANs are configured and the VLANs are redirected to the DSMs on the, uh, on the target VRF. And the configuration summary, enable IP fix under the DSM context, configure the source interface for IP fix for the 610K, note the constraints on that, create the desired flow export policies and either targeting um, Traffic Insight Collector, which we'll be looking at in a moment, and then apply those flow export policies to the distributed services switches via the PSM. You can use all VRS for that method or apply the flow export policies to specific VRS in the PSM. Excuse me. So just moving on to Traffic Insight, so tr the configuration steps for Traffic Insight. Same thing, appropriate VLANs, redirected DSM modules, enable IP fix under the DSM context. We need that as well. And there's some switch side configuration. So we need to configure a Traffic Insight instance and then define an IP interface as the Traffic Insight collector and then the PSM side configuration is exactly the same as an export policy for IP fix. It's treated traffic insight instances treated like uh, an export, an IP fix export collector, but it's internal. So we just do the same process there. So on the traffic insight with the IP fix data, this architecture framework is exactly the same, more or less as the 6364 and the 8360, except the IP fix process is coming off the ASIC hardware with the AMD Pensando. So this is identical more or less, except that the IP fix process, which would be running on the AOSCX, is now in ASIC on the AMD Pensando. And there's a couple of points to note. So to get the CLI out of the OVSD, DB, you can use it. Sorry, if you can get the output from the OVSDB, you can use CLI or use REST. And if you've got over 2K flows in the cache, this is pushed to the database every 30 seconds. Under 2K flows, typically that will be pushed every 12 minutes, takes a longer time for that to come up. That's how it is today. That may change in future releases because they're still they're working on this telemetry system as, as we speak. So only 2K can be stored in the database at a time and it will write 2K flows and re refresh every 30 seconds with another 2K flows. So that's the timers at the moment. And I said that we'll be giving a more of an update as the integration with Central becomes nearer and these, these timers and these, this solution is finalised in its entirety with the integration with Central. So just a note also that the uh, Traffic Insight will aggregate incoming and outgoing flows of the same bi-directional flow, reporting a single flow with both RX and TX traffic. So the configuration on the switch side example, so do the same thing, enable IP fix, 
then we configure traffic insight so it's traffic insight and then the traffic insight instant instance in this case i've called it ip fix hyphen dss1 source is ip fix there's only one source at the moment we have to enable it and then we have to define a monitor in this case i've called the monitor monitor 11 and then give it a type now this is ex an expectation of things to come but they're not there yet so we've only got one type called workload hyphen flows so that's a traffic insight instance that's the source which is there's only one source which is ip fix we've got one type called workload flows and a traffic insight monitor name there's only one that you can configure so you can only configure one traffic insight instance which is our, in this example ip fix hyphen dss1 and within that instance you can only um, configure one monitor so that's a single instance and a single type available along with a single monitor so that is the switch side configuration and the last part of it is to enable a loop back address or an svi address or a routed only port with as the flag it as the uh, traffic insight flow collector and that's the command you use traffic hyphen insight flow hyphen collector and then that will be enabled for traffic insight and just a note on cop so this affects the throughput of traffic insight so Traffic Insight will use the control plane and it's been tested at with these two values, upper and lower limits. So at default with the control plane piecing, it's tested at 100K throughput using the default COP setting. And the upper limit it's been tested at is 200K throughput using an upper limit COP setting value. So that would look like something like this. We've got the default COP value, flow telemetry default, and 6500 packets per second per second and the flow to the telemetry changes 13,700 that's the configuration change and that gives us the upper limit for the flow telemetry of 200k and I've used in this example I've used the standard default cop policy to do that so PSM side exactly the same as IP fix so we go to flow export we just use the target IP address as defined with this command under in this example it's a loopback on a non-rotable uh, IP address for the traffic insight flow collector command configured via the CLI and save that and that's all all that needs to be done and then we apply that to our export policy to a DSS or VRF and that's effectively our configuration finished. So if we do it just at high night, if we do it, it will be by the DSS, it will be applied to all VRFs or we can do it via a, the individual VRF itself. and yeah that's just a reminder we can mix that mix and match between one flow export per dss and another one on the at the vrf level so the primary use case on traffic insight well this isn't there yet so it's kind of work in progress at, from a solution perspective so we're expecting something to arrive in summer 2024 and we would have formal support for this in release 10.13.1000. That's the AOS CX release, of course. So we've got some configuration guidelines. Uh, there's not an awful lot of flexibility in terms of the configuration best practice. So flow export interval, as I mentioned, 10 seconds minimum to a maximum of 15 minutes that will dictate the rate of export the collector target must be reachable in the default vrf it can be a vip at 
you know, it's targeting, but it must be in the default VRF. Uh, that's a duplicate. I meant to take that out, but didn't. Uh, each export policy can have only one collector target and what one collector target for one export policy. So if it's applied at the DSS level, then it applies to all VRS in the DSS. And we've got 16 flow export policy configurations that can be configured per PSM fabric. So that's 16 Maxon and an individual DSS as well. Um, so if you use them all up on one DSS, then you can't apply any more export policies on another DSS. One policy, one IP address for one collector, a maximum of two policies and two collectors on any given VRF. Um, the source interface IP fix command is treated as mandatory, otherwise there'd be all sorts of problems. IP fix source interface can be a loopback, etc. SVI, ROP. Um, it's got to be in the default VRF, as I mentioned. The management VRF is not supported. And if you've got one collector, just to reinforce, I labour the point actually I've got here. Uh, if you've got one collector already applied at the DSS level, then all VRFs in that DSS will only be able to add one additional collector. Two collectors, likewise, or similar, uh, can be applied at the DSS DSS level. Then no more collectors are allowed on a VRF. No collectors at the DSS level. Then you've got the option of having two collectors on each VRF. So that's the configuration guidelines. Um, and you can obviously use the same two collectors on all VRS at the DSS level. Or choose uh, any two collectors from a max of 16 for the DSS. So onto diagnostic commands. So just quickly run through these. So these commands Again, okay, I've been around since we introduced. Let's get my laser points back. Show DSN uh, redirect, obviously redirecting this display of redirected VLAN to the DSM. Um, that's just here for just reference diagnostics to connect to the appropriate DSM or console, diag DSM console one slash one, for instance. And there you can get some information from the flow table as in PDCTL show flow. Got some snips there, but that's the flow table export. And then PDSCTL show flow dash dash summary gives you a good snapshot if you don't want the detail. And on a new command for traffic insight, diag hyphen dump traffic insight basic uh, diagnostics and run that command, pulls it out from the um, OVSDB database and you can see the output there and this is the traffic insight command that we can use to get the telemetry up from the cni from the show command so we've got to use the traffic insight instance ip fix hyphen dss and the monitor name and that gives you that output as well and Debug traffic insight, that's a new command as well. Obviously very good for diagnosing what's working well and what's not working well at all. So the various options there you can see. And push traffic insight to the database. So as I mentioned, if you've got under 2K and it's not turning up in the database, you can use this command to push it um, to the database and then extract it with this command. So again, this is a bit of a long command there, but you've got to use the traffic insight instance and then the monitor name as well to get that push from the shell and then pause, exit out of there and then do the show traffic insight command to get the output from the database. On to scalability and performance. As I mentioned earlier, the number of IP fixed flows is dependent on the number of flows in the DSM modules. So the maximum that you could expect to get is a maximum 800K flows per DSM. That's with a 10 second export collector, but that's the top end. 
So traffic insight flows, well, this depends on in terms of throughput. Uh, top end scale would be dependent on the default setting, the control plane policing, 100K. The upper limit is 200K in terms of throughput. One traffic insight collector per DSS. And the number of IP fix collectors configured is 16, maximum of two per VRF. And this doesn't change. It's just we've now got the IP fix allocated connections per second with the firewall setting as well. And that's all I had for you today. I do thank you for tuning in.